Hey everyone, welcome to a beautiful day in my craft room. And yes, I have a mould here that is so big, I can't even fit it all on screen. <laughs> I'll have to zoom out in a minute. Right, anyone wondering why I've got this in my hand? Treadmill belt lubricant, pure silicon. I certainly don't have a treadmill, let's just leave it there. Right, what I'm going to try and do is a big bowl. Remember my freeform bowl? It was actually made in an, in an actual mould, this one. And then I shaped it freehand. Do you remember that one? Anyway, I'm going to do another one. And this time I'm going to use the oil and the resin in the colours. At least, I hope so. I've never tried this before. Right, let's have a go then. Let's see if I can do it. Let me introduce you to what we've got then. One whopping big mould. Here it is. It's huge. Um, does it say how big it is? Tells you how much it took. Oh, 14 inch. There we are. It's a 14 inch mould. I'm going to put that out of the way initially though because it's so big. Okay, so that's the mould. I've got some plastic cups. These are recycled. Um, I think they had trifles in them or something. Mum gave them me. We have got our colours. We have got open water blue, supreme white. Sorry about the state of these pots. They, they go so far. They've lasted for ages and therefore the pots are in the right state. Got some white shimmer. We've got, can't remember what this colour's called. Twilight. There you go. It's like a subtle blue. We've got some sparkle. We've got some um, floating silver. We've got some silver shards. We've got some colours. We've got emerald green. We've got aqua blue. We've got purple. Uh, well, amethyst. Those are all from Just For You Online. And, and we have our silicon lubricant, of course. Now, I bought two bottles of this really cheap because uh, it's the only 100% pure silicon oil I could find in small quantities. <laughs> First job, of course, is to get some resin mixed up. So we're going to do it in two stages. Now, obviously, we're going to want this to uh, still be soft so that I can actually bend it. And when you do it in two stages, that could be tricky. <sighs> yeah, because obviously the first stage I need to cure a bit first. And uh, hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a challenge, this one. Just going to clear the space off then and let's get our resin mixed up. I'll get my gloves on and my mask and we will get started. Just thought the other colour I'm going to need is black. What I want to do is have a dark smoky base with just a little bit of just a little bit of some interest to it because that will be where our oil creates the little cells. I'm hoping we'll get a bit of that showing through. So I'm going to get the resin mixed up first. And this is the one, let me show you. This is so cool. It comes with pumps. Look, the bigger bottles they do to the pump. Makes your arm ache pumping it out, but it makes it so much less messy and so much easier to measure. So when mixing the resin, this is what you want to do for anybody who's not done it before. One, stir more slowly than me because I have already introduced bubbles. However, I'm not going to panic because this resin... Um, it's a really high quality resin and it degasses really well anyway. So I'm not too worried, but slowly, slowly stir. Make sure you get right into the corners. Now you'll see that there's like these streaks in it at the moment. Can you see that? It doesn't look completely clear. That is how you know that it isn't mixed yet. So keep going. Now I suggest add your colours in at the end because you can see when those streaks have gone it, while it's clear. If you've added colours, you won't be able to. So you're risking not getting it mixed properly so just keep going and going and going it takes a couple of minutes usually the same goes for any resin by the way any resin you're mixing um, if it's a clear one wait until all the streaks have gone i'm gonna get a wipe i use wonder wipes um some people use baby wipes if you do use baby wipes use the water only ones the ones that have got all like the moisturizers and cleansing stuff and all that in them aren't very good for your moulds so go for uh, go for the water only ones uh, or use something like I'm doing these are from these are from a DIY store uh, I get them on Amazon but that's what they are they're uh, from a tradesman's DIY type store now what I'm doing here is just mixing in the tiniest dot of black I forgot to show you that earlier look at the state of that pot that's how long I've had it it's uh, the jet black from just for you online. It's very intense. You saw the tiniest little bit I put in there because I want this to stay translucent, really. 
And what we're going to put in here, just to give it a little bit of interest, is a tiny dot of the blue, because I don't want it completely black, you see. <laughs> it is translucent anyway, so it's not going to be very dark. It looks it in the pot, but, you know, when it's spread out thin, it won't be. So what we're putting in is a little bit of blue pigment, and again, only a tiny bit. You will probably barely see it, but it's just to add the tiniest bit of shimmer to the black. And the same with this glitter. This is from just a few online as well. It's an extremely fine one. And again, I'm only putting the tiniest bit like so. It's just so that whatever shows through, if the cells make gap, complete gaps through, we're not getting totally see-through. We're getting this slight, slightly not quite black shimmer and you can see on my stick it's going to be very translucent i'm just hoping that's dark enough in fact once it's all thin on the uh on our base might just put just a tiniest bit more black these pigment pastes um people people have people have said to me oh they're lovely but they're expensive i've had this for over a year now and i use it a hell of a lot but you saw the tiniest bit i just put in there if I'd put just a little bit more, this would be completely opaque. It lasts forever. I'm reckoning, I've only used about half that tub, and I reckon I would have got through about three or four of the little bottles of pigment at least by now. Probably more. Might have to mix another pot of this up. Should have done a bigger pot, shouldn't I? And clearly I didn't mix the colour in completely in that last out of that last lot. <laughs> but never mind. So that's all we're doing. We're just making ourselves a nice uh nice transparent base. And I'm just gonna try spreading this around. This is just a rubber cheap rubber brush from a cook shop. Because this will not scratch my mould. Yeah, I'm going to make up another layer because I want it also, I want it not only a little bit thicker, but a little bit darker than that. So, just going to do the same again and chuck it in. And I that will then leave it, well, like I said, it's warm in here, so it'll probably be quite quick. But I'm probably going to leave it for, well, I don't know, a couple of hours. I will keep checking on it hourly because all I want to get it to is the stage at which it's firmed up so that I can put our next layer in. Um... Obviously, you know, it'd be completely undemoldable at that point. I just want it so we've got a bit of a surface on it so that the two layers don't mix. That's it. That's as far as I want to get it. So I will carry on, put another layer in, and I'll see you later. In the studio, I'm mixing colours, feeling great, pouring black resin into molds. Watching it fly, the way it flows and drips, it's a mesmerising dance, hard to believe how fast. It's resin magic, no chance I'm a crafter Defines I'm creating in my own soul Every masterpiece I make, I feel it in my bones The clock's ticking But I'm lost in this resin world Every piece I create, my passion So, the, what's left over in the original cup? I'm going to drizzle in straight away like so just to give us a bit of a, a base to work around the original layer by the way is is still it's quite soft to the touch but it's kind of formed like a quite a skin it's been about five hours something like that it cooled down in my room so it uh, it isn't quite going quite as crazy fast as as i thought it might right we're gonna mix up some colours. We're going to have some green. I don't. I'm not entirely sure which of these are opaque and which are transparent. Yeah, I'm going to need some more opacity in that, aren't I? I know. So I've got this green that's rather nice. We're going to end up with a nice pearlescent effect as well, aren't we? Oh, wasn't what I had planned. Really should have checked beforehand, shouldn't I?
but a combination of that and that green I originally put in. Let's have a bit more of that green. I'm trying to darken it down. Maybe should have gone with a, a pigment paste instead, like I'm probably going to end up doing with the blue at some point. Then. Okay, I'm going to go straight in with the actual paste. See how thick it is, look at how much pigment there is in there. Now I'm going to use quite a bit because again I want it really quite opaque. I'm going to go translucent in places anyway and we've got this uh, blue background behind it too so yeah, we should get the effect on after. Not lovely. That's a beautiful colour, isn't it? Oh, finally near the edge of this one. This has lasted me so long. Now again, I'm going to want quite a strong colour, so I'm going to use a lot more pigment than I normally would need. I think the white is going to have a bit of work cut out, isn't it, because of the black base. There's our white shimmer. White, there it is. This is supreme white. I know the pot doesn't look like it. <laughs> Once you open it, you can see it really is. Again, I'm going to use, this has gone very thick, but I'm using quite a bit because it is, I say gone very thick, it just is very thick. It's just so, the same as the other ones, it's really, really pigmented. Let me show you. This is why this goes, this stuff goes such a long way. Watch this. That was a tiny little bit, wasn't it? A little bit more than I probably needed. So, but look at that. <laughs> Completely and utterly opaque is exactly what I wanted from the white. And that easy to mix in as well. Amazing stuff. This one's, oops, this one's always the showstopper. And we only need a tiny bit. And this is the floating powder. And that is lovely. In the studio, I'm mixing colors, feeling great, pouring black resin into molds. Watching it fly, the way it flows and drips, it's a mesmerizing dance. Hard to believe how fast it cures. It's resin magic, no chance. I'm a crafter, defines I'm creating in my own zone. Every masterpiece I make, I feel it in my bones. The clock's ticking, but I'm lost in this dressing world. Every piece I create, my passion unfurls. Resin magic, it's an art that sets me free. Pouring liquid dreams, watching them. Obviously, I'm top coat this anyway, and I might end up going in with another layer anyway, so I'm not too concerned about the thickness at the moment. Obviously, it's going to be a bowl, you don't want it too thick anyway, but you do need a certain amount to just give it that strength. Right now, let me introduce you to one of my favourite silly toys. This is an air blower. It's a miniature leaf blower. And I use this when I don't want to get heat into it particularly. Because <laughs> you know your heat guns blow things around beautifully, don't they? But it will get a load of heat into it as well. Which, it's warm enough in here and I don't want this flash curing. So, rather than stand here blowing at it myself, I've got this little thing. It's just a cheap little thing. I think it was from Amazon. <laughs> I'll see if I can find a link for you. It's called a miniature leaf blower. Mini leaf blower, something like that. Oh, 
doing is blowing it around to get some movement. Because it's got a little fine nozzle as well, you can be a bit more targeted where you blow it to. Now I have got some voids in this anyway. Uh, I'm not bothered because they will probably add to the effect that I'm after. So don't panic if you can see some you know, dead space where the colour hasn't gone. Well, the, well, the resin hasn't gone. I think I'm getting most of them out with my little blower, but I'm not worried if it isn't, if it doesn't. Because I think it'll just all add to the effect. I think my battery's going flat. Oh no, oh no, it's rechargeable. It's been a while since I used it, so. You see what I mean about this silver can take over? It's not, I think I got it just right. But it just it goes into lines and because it floats it's amazing it just it's just beautiful love it And now you can see why I wanted that black, mostly, background, because I just knew that it would show through in places. So, I think I need to put my little vacuum on charge. <laughs> just plugs into a USB. Right, now for the, the fun, what I think is going to be the fun bit. I have got a dotting tool. I've got a little pot. I'm going to put some of this silicon oil into the little pot, that's way more than I'm going to need. We're going to get the dotting tool and we're going to dot all over it and see what happens. Right, I'm going to watch what happens there before I go any further. We're getting weird dimples. It's not really doing the effect that I thought it would. See, it almost looks studded. Now the ones that the colours that are floating on the surface more, we're going to get more of an effect by the look of it. Oh, there we are. I kind of want it to look very well, almost organic. So people will look at it and go, "Well, how how, how did that happen?" It's working really well through the silver and the white. So let's do a lot more of that. Yeah, it's working. Didn't think it was going to at first. This is the, the small end of my dotting tool, by the way. Um, we've got a fat end at the other end. I'm just going in with a small one because, as you can see, it really spreads anyway. Might go in with a bit more in a few places, give it a second dot. I'll switch to my bigger dotting tool end in a minute. Just to give it variety. Now, if I can find the videos that I saw probably a year ago of people doing this properly, <laughs> I will link them because I honestly can't remember who it was. I need to do some hunting around because I absolutely did not invent this, <laughs> as I'm sure you all know. Now what we'll need to do before we put the last, the next layer on will be um, 
Well, this needs to cure up pretty well. I'm just wondering whether it's ever going to be bendy enough to be a bowl. I might need to get some heat into it. Because by the time I put the third layer in, I bet the first layer will have cured. Getting kind of the freaky effect I wanted. It's not full on cells. Well, in the white it is. Um, but I was looking for something more spooky. Which is kind of what I've got. almost alien-esque isn't it I'll just switch it over to the bigger end now I'm putting in some really quite big drops now which I don't think is really necessary but yeah I'm gonna have to let this get to the stage where I can wipe it off so I can put the next layer on, won't I? And I am going to need to top coat it. Because of the little voids in it. Let's not fill those in. Let's fill those in now. But there's all this oil in here, so <laughs> it's going to be messy. I like how this has gone across here. The white works beautifully, doesn't it? And I'm aware that there's some areas where I haven't dotted. That's fine because I didn't necessarily want to dot all over. Now this edge here, I think I am going to pull, pull in lightly. Because there's an actual dip there. And really that's the only reason I need to do a top coat. And all there is here too. That white's impressive how that's gone. Now whoever invented this technique is going to be looking at this and thinking, what the hell? <laughs> that white area is really dramatic, isn't it? Maybe should have gone in with more white. I was being a bit sparing because it can, can, can take over rather. Oh yes. It's kind of what I was after. Right, I'm going to clean up. Going to let that cure. Put me little baby leaf blower on charge. Again, no, I'm not going to let it cure completely. I'm still hoping to get this out and make a bowl with it. If not, it's going to be a funky tray or something. And <laughs> but I think the next layer will just be clear. Right, I will see you later. Okay, everyone, it is still way too soft to uh, be able to get the oil off. Uh, as you can see, I went in with a bit of purple as well. But forgot to record that bit, sorry. Uh, but yeah, look at the sparkle coming through, the shimmer. It's got these weird, almost cells, but not. But what we've got is that a weird, cloudy... From up here, it looks like a map of the world almost. Isn't that odd? Anyway, yes, it's still way too soft to... Because um, I'm going to have to wipe the oil off. It's too soft to do that. So I'm going to give it another couple of couple of hours maybe an hour I don't know as long as I can touch the surface to wipe the oil off that's the main thing and then we'll go in with some probably apex one coat because that only takes a couple of hours to cure and we should then I hope be able to do the bendy thing so I'll see you again later okay we're in business excuse the shine and the uh yeah the lighting 
<laughs> it's all a bit rubbish because uh, it's no night. Now, so far, mission accomplished. Look, it's still bendy. And I can get the oil off because the surface is, is hardened. This is the thing we're doing these bowls, isn't it? It's just that, trying to hit that sweet spot of when it's bendy, but not, not sticky. Uh, right, so I'm just going to keep cleaning this off. And then what I'm going to do, because I've obviously still got a bit of time with this, I'm going to lob some of that two hour cure resin on it. Like I said I would, but I need to make sure I've got all of this oil off first. Yes, yes, people, this is toilet tissue. <laughs> Run out of kitchen roll. Now, now that has sent the surface a bit rubbishy because of spraying the alcohol, I presume. But anyway, as long as there's no... I can't feel any oil. Well, hey, if there is, there is. Now, um, get, I'm going to get PPE'd up and go in with the one coat. Now, as I said, one coat takes two hours for the demold. Uh, I am hoping that I can catch it while, again while it's all still bendy. So I'm going to check it in an hour and we'll see what stage it's at. But let's get this one coat mixed up. Okay, so now the next day, and this is well and truly hard, which is fantastic. I can see the glitter's gone out to the edges as I wanted. Those little metal shards. Uh, what are they? Little shards. Hmm. Now, while I get this all sorted, I just want to say thank you so much to my channel members and to everybody who watches and subscribes and to all the people who've sent me a super thanks or bought me a coffee lately. Really do appreciate all your support. You're, you're what's making it possible for me to even do this. Um, so thank you so much everyone and of course thank you to the lovely suppliers who make it possible too by sending me stuff to work with right now should we lift this off now because I put the silicon mat underneath that should make that bit easier let's put it out of the way <laughs> and here we go Oh yes, I'm pleased with that. That's crazy. And it's not quite symmetrical, but it's near enough. I've got some bits I need to trim off here. I'll just show you the easy way of doing that, shall I? Now, of course, you can, if you've got a deburring tool, use that. <laughs> but when it's big pieces like this, you can just use that. Now watch your eyes, because obviously... If it's well and truly cured, it's going to snap off that little bit. It's still a little bit soft, so that made life easier. Depends how thick it is. There we are. Now, what we're going to need to do, just to make totally sure, is go around these edges with a file. And I might as well uh, go around them with some silver. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. You know, resin edging pens, that sort of thing. So this is just where the little bit of the resin sort of crept up the sides. So I will get a deburring tool on that bit, I think. But there we are. What do you think, everyone? Um, what I'm seeing is that the oil splats created quite a weird effect, which seems to have shown through somehow here. It's, uh, yeah, it's carried through onto the surface. It's almost as if I didn't quite get the oil off properly. But that has given me... I did wonder, actually. I didn't rub it clean for long enough. But that's given me these weird splots and splats in the surface, too. So, a little bit different for you. Hope you like it. And I will be, yeah, as I said, I'll go around the edges with a, a file um, just to finish them off, get them a nice clean finish. And then we'll get some photos done. And that'll be it till the next video. So thank you so much for watching, everyone. Really appreciate your support. And I look forward to seeing you for the next one. Take care then, everyone. Bye.